Hi there everyone, it's me, your fav- Hi there everyone, it's me, the Romanian Regent. Today we continue our campaign by trying to reform the Mongol Empire and expanding into the Middle East and um, China and to what was once the Ming Dynasty. We all begin by conquering um, Ma Mazandaran. Just go in and fight them. There you go. And they ran off like a bunch of cowards. Man, they are being so annoying right now. Yeah, and I had to peace out just because... Um, yeah, I want to turn off the force because I want to be a cheapskate. And they will just CG me to death. And now we can hopefully take all of Novgorod, or at least what remains of it. Yeah, and we, and we are just going to build some uh, manufacturers all around. And we'll have to wait for another war to fully annex Novgorod. And it seems like Novgorod developed these provinces quite a lot, so we'll get a lot of um, mana points from these. What I could do is get Ming as vassals and use them to get all to get all these land. But personally, I'll just like to take it and raid it. Yeah, I'll just declare war on Oirat because Shun is three thousand is nearly four thousand ducats in debt. Jesus, and we'll just go in on Oirat. I think we can fully an yes we can fully annex the uh, oil right? and we will do that. And these provinces suck a lot. As you can see, I've done a bit of conquering and took Afghanistan, and the uh, trade company everything. I'm also noticing that getting destroyed by Austria. What is this? Defender against Brandenburg War of Protestant League. Oh, they're having that uh, Protestant religious war. Oh, that this is an opportunity. All right, so Poland won't join. I think we just go in right now on po on um, Lithuania. Poland won't join. They have weak allies. Yeah, I think we just need to go right now. And even though and even though they outnumber us technically, we should be able to fight to use some strategies to fight them effectively. Yeah, our mana generation just sucks right now due to our 1-2-2 king. We do only need one province from Lithuania, so it should be good. We will first need to grind Lit Lithuania's troops into the dust first. So we will need to retreat a bit. Yeah, this spell doesn't look good. We have better morale and discipline than Lithuania. Not discipline, but near equal. Yeah, I think I'll try to take this spell. Hopefully it will work. Or do I take the free company? I think I have to take the free company. I don't think I really have a choice here. I am gonna get a lot of money from this war anyway, so I might as well just wait a bit. Let it get a bit of morale first. These troops have locked in and they're going south, so I think we'll just go in right now. And we take favorable, cas favorable casualties actually. I think we will try chasing these, tro these Lithuanian troops south. Let's see how this goes. And we can take a bell. Alright, so again, there will be a 4 day delay between the free company arriving and uh, my troops going to combat. So just let let's just reinforce everyone first. There you go. Alright, I think we'll try going for a siege now. I already know this will be a bloody war. The lack of forts up north is annoying. I'm gonna fight this bell on their flanks. If this doesn't fall, it felt them. This is annoying. All right, let's see how they let's see how they move. <sighs> They're so annoying. Oh, they want to siege Moscow. Okay, okay. And it seems like we can attract some troops off the siege. They will arrive on the seventh of February. I'm taking this battle. I don't care. This is gonna be quite a bit back, quite a big battle. That we ultimately win. And I cannot allow Moscow to fall. And they pulled out. This is a forest. This is a plains province. So maybe you can fight them here. Hopefully. Yes we can. Oh my god. And I think. Yeah we lost that battle. Pull out. But it was more bloody for them. They're so annoying. Let's go north. Try to relieve the siege of Moscow. Oh. We may be able to do it. Just barely. Come on. Don't do it. Yes. We could take a lot of money from Lithuania. They will go on that siege. We catch another 3,000 troops over here, and yeah, the combat width is 27. Let's see what we can do with that. So we want 10,000 cannons. We have um, another 13,000 troops from the three companies, so that is 23,000. That means we need about another 7,000 from here. We let our morale recover. We wait three, four days, and then we go in with the rest. If you're lucky, this if we are lucky, this could be a stack wipe. It isn't, but it is a huge win for us. Lithuania did run out of manpower quite a long time ago. 
While I would like to fight this war longer, I think I'm just going to take this prov this one province I need and 1200 ducats, which is a lot. This pays off for our loans and that free company. And we still haven't got the printing press just because of how massive our empire is. I think we're going on Karakunulu because they are at war with um, the Mamluks and they just seem vulnerable right now. They do have quite a lot of troops, I know. I do see a few Karakunul troops behind me. We can hopefully win this, although it is in the mountains, so I do not like that one bit. Oh, and we win this hands down. And we piss out their other ally. Now Karakunulu is all alone. All of this is mountains. Yeah, I don't like that. I'll just have to wait for them to go on a siege. I am starting to get uh, quite a few revolts. And we stack wipe the rest of the Mamluki of the rest of the Karakanul army with the help of um, the Mamluks. They have zero troops. Yeah, once the Mam once the Mamluks uh, peace out, I'm just sieging everything. Actually, I'm just going to siege everything so they cannot build any more troops. All right, I'm just literally going to spread everywhere. I will just get as quickly as possible out of here. Come on, 49%, 49%, come on. 99%. So to reform the Mongol Empire, we need... Yeah, we need quite a lot of land. Um... Alright, so... I think we'll do something like that. Just trying to cut off the Ottomans from expanding over here, and maybe trying to attack Soran as soon as possible, to get the lands we need over here. And we can finally embrace the printing press like 35 years later than everyone. But before I get the next uh, the next text, I am just going to find the best um, the the best technology the, the the best technologies the peoples have and then get spy networks on them so that I can get a tech reduction cost from that. And our na nation is a bit on fire. Right. Oh, the interest on these loans does sting quite a bit. I don't like that. I just, uh, I just noticed that the Ottomans are for some reason really weak. What happened? 52,000 troops, that's pathetic. Ah, uh, no, 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 I'm not going to order them. No way, no way, sir. Alright, I am trying to play around with uh, trade companies and try and get a few more merchants to, re to redirect trade. I am really starting to like this trade income. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, and the Ottomans don't really like us. Why? Pressed issue over borders. Oh, that was a mistake. Fortunately, they are not too strong right now. We are just going to go in for the remnants of Novgorod. This is the final stand of Novgorod. They fought val valiantly. I don't think the cavalry at this point is really worth it. It costs three times as much, but... In terms of shock, it's only not even two times better, and in terms of firepower, it's just half the strength of normal infantry. So I think I'm gonna downscale that cavalry army, unfortunately. We do unfortunately need to downscale on our cavalry usage, it's just not worth it. We are now up at 60,000 troops, so I guess that, is a, that was a sacrifice worth making. And the Ottomans have rivaled us, that's not good. That's not good in the slight. I do think that we have to kill the Ottomans. When we get Miltech 16, that makes cannons really strong. So, at that point, I think we just have to go in on the Ottomans. There's no other way. Just take all of these provinces we need to form the Mongol Empire. Did you ever see one of those maps where they like overlay where the Mongol Empire expanded and then show a map of like the most authoritarian nations in the world? I think an interesting fact about the Mongols is that they pretty much integrated in every society that they conquer, you know, China, the Middle East, Central Asia, ever except for Russia. In Russia, what they kind of did is that they mixed together because you'd, because you'd have a structure of power where the Tsar would rule over giant fiefdoms of land and, and his vassals couldn't really do much to stop him. And instead of the Mongols either killing everyone in the places, and instead of the Mongols killing everyone that in the lands they conquered or integrating into them, they kind of fused together and created a very weird system that led to the absolutist, tsarist type of government that Russia had. 
which is one of those you know interesting facts about history that that is fun to know so i will do what people in multiplayer do which is to have one complete row of artillery in the back and then just have enough infantry and cavalry to fill in the front line and so even if i were to lose a battle as long as I retreated before my artillery got in the front lines, they wouldn't be damaged and, they, and my artillery would have gotten to do a, a ton of damage to the enemy army. It seems like Mazandaran only has Kerman that they can call in, so they would pro and since I also have this 30k stack over here, they would probably be an easy target to take out. Once my diplomat comes back of course. Yeah, we are declaring war right now. A 353 3 air, I will absolutely take that. You know, he is slightly better than my current king, so I'm going to recruit my king as a general just in the hope that he dies earlier. We actually lost this battle, Jesus. Oh, and we have a Shia betrayal in Golestan, which will apparently bring 16 rebel armies over here. Let's see how this goes. I do love when the when the AI fights the rebel my rebels for me. We also have our spy our spy network in Brandenburg is also being maxed out, and so now we can just take these technologies five percent cheaper. There you go, and now we're pretty much up to tech. I think we I think we will try to take this battle over here. We will send these thirty thousand troops in, and then we send in another three K just to reinforce the line. We should win this considering it's on flat lands and so we will get a bonus here. We should win this. Our front lines are filled and we lose? Yes we do. That sucks. The thing is that we can afford to, to just fight on like this. Yeah I do need more um, infantry to fill the line because there were a couple of cannons that got the front line and that did suffer some damage. We got back our forts, now on to the next one. Now we will attack from both sides. We can finally get Kerman out, mainly the reason I siege them was to annul their lines with Maza Mazandaran and Baluchistan and you know also get some more reparations. And now we will just uh, cripple them. There you go. We raise all of these provinces. And we are able to pour them on the chip. And also, most importantly, we are adding all of these to the trade company. Okay, we have a bit too many forts at this point, honestly. It's a bit ridiculous. Alright, let me think. The thing is that all of these forts are really good. They're in the mountains. They're just good. I think, yeah, we're gonna get rid of this. Mm, it's level 4 though. Okay, we're gonna get rid of this fort. This one is in a desert, we're getting rid of it. This one, although it's good, it's in a desert, so yeah, we're getting rid of it. This one is in a grassland, so I think it, not, it will unfortunately have to go. This level 4, I don't think it's gonna help, so we're just gonna get rid of it. And that is our 4 maintenance problem resolved. Oh god. I think Oyret literally just... They, there were two provinces over here that were sieged by rebels that were killed then. I think Oyret somehow broke away from us. I'll conquer they have a truth with us, that's annoying, but I will conquer them later. In the meantime, I think I'll go after Chagatai. Here's the thing, now that you have Miltech 16, cannons have gotten a massive boost. Before when they were basically on par with um infantry in terms of fire damage, now they are more than double. This is when cannons really get really get useful and this is the point in late game when you could realistically fight the Ottomans one on one. You know what, I'm getting Sweden as an ally. Just to make sure that the Ottomans absolutely do not declare war on me while I'm not ready. And also before these few thousand Kazani tribes rise up, I'm also just going to quickly... Now that I've dealt with the, with the rebels, I think it's time to go and take out um, Chagatai. Let's see how this goes, and that's a stack wipe, as you'd expect. Now let's just go and take out their allies one by one. We will make Limbuvan, okay, can cancel their alliance with Chagatai, give us money, war reps, do more stuff to, uh, to get more prestige from this, pillage their capital, and yeah, that's it. And we can just peace out with uh, Chagatai, or everything. 
That is a weird thing I don't understand. I shift click to get uh, the max amount of money, but they wouldn't do it. But for some reason you have to click automatically because even though they are totally okay, totally fine with being completely, uh, completely annexed, they for some reason don't want to give up their money. <laughs> even though they are willing to just be annexed right now. But whatever. Oh, that is annoying. So in case you didn't know, when you annex a nation, if they still had some of their armies over here, in this case Chagatai, they will become rebel troops and be here in your land. Which, you know, pretty, that's annoying me a bit. I'm also going to be destating some provinces to add them to trade, to add them to trade companies. I, yeah, I'm just destating some provinces to try and get a second merchant. There you go, second merchant. I think at this point we can start afford to get level 2 advisors. I'm going to start improving relations with Yao because I want to develop the next institution and by getting this Maliki scholar to come to our country by getting 150 relations with Yao, we get a minus 10% development cost. Edict. Ability. Well, our truce with Oret, with Oret expires, but first I want to quickly deal with some. Now we go to war with Oret to, re to take back our rightful provinces. The question is can the question is can we full annex the great the oil rats? Yes we can. And all of these are being trade companies. There are apparently Oh I full annex I full annex oil rat and they had eight thousand troops. So somewhere in Siberia there are eight thousand oil ratty troops running around. Which I'll probably see soon. And we have also gained access due to admin tech to one of my favorite abilities in this game, which is Forced March. And we will go to war with uh, Karkanul. There is 6,000 troops tech wiped and another 5,000. There you go. That's a good start to this war. Wonder if we can, wo wondering if we can catch them here. Yes. We arrive on the 16th and we get this 4 fire guy. I do hate that modifier which gives us 25% less shock in non plane terrain. I hate that. I can't really see it since they will just be causing trouble right now. So I do have to just go and deal with them quickly. They will arrive 4 days later and it should be a stack but it isn't. Maybe we can catch the Carcanule troops. Oh yes, we definitely can. Wait for the wait for the Moftik to get more morale. Now I'm gonna start sieging and just catching off as many of their troops, off guard specifically. Oh no, you didn't, you bastard! The Ottomans declared war on Karkanul. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm not allowing the Ottomans to do me like this again. I'm catch, I'm capturing as much land as possible. The Ottomans got the forts. <sighs> They're so annoying. I can at least like probably get like these troops. Quickly march down there. They don't have the fort. Go in. The Ottomans can go to hell. Yeah, that's right, Ottomans. You gave my provinces back. Oh, they pissed out with the Carcanules. Yeah, I'm just going to annex the rest of Mazandaran. Even if it's more aggressive expansion. Or instead, you know what? I'm just going to get a short truce with them and some money a five-year truce oil rat again with the revolt this siege has been going on for a long time here come on 35 percent chance constantly 40 percent it's been happening so much it's actually not even funny 700 days this siege lasted two years sauron an old lions pay money and war reps and then also like the release this or I could simply just take mon just take them out. Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, I only need like a couple of provinces from Sauron. Actually. I just don't have enough force for I'll just cut them off. So they can't so they can't be conquered by anyone else. Oh forget it, I was just being dumb. They can get all I want. That will be that. I will just make sure to cut them off from possible future conquest and yes that's a good deal there are a lot of points to be taken from here oh I'm, I'm li i literally have max set and i have a hundred over extension uh oh i'm i have concentrated development so that lowered it a bit 
and also don't forget to trade company all of these the, f the free company also ran, ran out of manpower so I have to get rid of it they did serve us well we are I, I was really sad and I was like why are we making 93 ducats and it's just from like the spoils of war of looting foreign cities so I got excited there for a moment yeah there you go these guys are so annoying and they will get it they will get those cities there you go and now deal with the rebels from Novgorod and they are attacking us which is good Oh, and we also got another merchant that we can use. Yeah, this is the best province I found to develop a um, global trade in. So I'm gonna do that. I hoped I could, I hoped I could also get this minus ten percent development cost discount, but you have to add them as a subject, overlord, or be allied them, and they don't want to be my ally. They just don't. So let's see, and in a few months it will spawn here, and global trade spawned here, now we will just have to wait for it to actually, you know, spread. Hey, Delhi will actually break their lines with Khorasan, I like that, I like that Delhi. Yeah, the expanding here won't really be a very good option, so I think we will start going seriously into China. Yeah, Delhi allied Shun, so I'm just gonna ask them to reduce their opinion of them. And then to break their alliance with them. Because I'm not gonna have that. Yeah, fighting Shun in Central Asia will be cancer. Yes, we are going to go to war with Shun. Let's go. Having Delhi to help us siege will, will be a blessing. I can see the Shuni troops in the north and after I get this siege we will go and fight them. We got it, now we will go and fight them. I want to fight them over here where there is more flat terrain, not like literally in mountains. Oh, that that was a poorly picked battle. Yeah, we lost a lot there, Jesus. I can get a morale advisor, that's gonna help. And my ruler dies, really? Oh my god, it's so annoying. It's so unbelievably annoying. This barrel will be pretty... We should... We will take this barrel in dry lands, or in deserts, and we should win this. Keyword on should. Let's see. And they actually got a siege, I swear. Although we did win the barrel, so I can't really complain. Although I will. Oh, and Japan is just going to go and siege north and be annoying. I see. Yeah. Right now, I'm honestly waiting to get a stability event that is like, oh, here is plus one stability. And so then I can hit this button twice, get to plus one stability, I press it, and I get to two, and I get to plus two stability. Or I press this button three times, get to plus two stability, and then save up only a hundred and fifty plus cost to get to three stability. I'm just going to wait and see what happens. I'm going I'm going to send in a few thousand troops every few days or every three days to try and uh, keep those lines reinforced and then see how it goes. Hmm, here's the thing. I'm considering leaving this war because I'm currently having a few rebel issues. Annulling their alliances with Bengal and Japan which are the with the, which represents the main problem and coming back in a few years. If I take all the money I can, it will be a truce or until 1628, May 1628, and without the money it will be like a year and a half earlier. I'll take like a few hundred ducats and just bail out. Now as you can see, they no longer have those annoying alliances, and I can now go and focus on dealing with these rebels, which are annoying as hell. Well, it seems like Delhi declared war on uh, some people, let me see exactly who they declared war on. Wait, wait, wait. Since Nepal is a part of the empire, Austria will protect them? I'm sorry, what? Okay, how powerful is Austria? How does this work? What? What? What does this mean? The Austria was gonna join... Not gonna ask. Just gonna deal with these rebels quickly. And the Ottomans declare war on us. And of course, of course, Delhi abandons us. Can we fight the Ottomans? Uh, I don't really think so, to be honest. 
What could we get out of this peace deal? <sighs> Not much at all. Right. Let me think. Yeah, I'm just gonna get a short truce with Lithuania and bounce and bounce from there. They're already weakened severely. Right. The the Ormans. Well, we have more morale, but the Ormans also have more discipline than us. Um, I think what we will do is we'll just fight the Ormans to a standstill and try to get as close to White Peace as possible. Because I we are really. And the Mamluks also declare war on us. All right, we have to peace out out of one of these wars. Let's see. The the Mamluks are definitely the weaker ones, so we could probably easily defeat them. If we were to peace out with the Ormans, to just peace deal, they would take all of this land, which, don't get me wrong, is horrible, absolutely horrible, but uh, it's not like we it's not like we would lose that much of our land. Meanwhile, the Mamluks, what would they want? No, I would not... Uh, Alright, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna peace out with the Ottomans straight away. Like, there's not really a point to try and fight them. Offer peace deal, right. And then, we get a pretty long truce with them, until 41. And now, we try to fight the, the Mamluki. I swear, man. <laughs> right, let's march down. We will fight the Mamlukians to, and to our last dang breath. Damn, the Ottomans really caught me off guard there. It's okay, it's okay, we'll take some land off uh, the Mamlukians and the Lithuanians in a few years. It's alright. As I said, you give up when, you, when you're mentally no longer willing to fight the war. At least the Mamlukians are dealing with our rebels, that's nice. Now we have to force march there, quickly. Oh, Jesus. We could take this battle. Should we take it, though? Uh, it's in mountains. That really puts it off for me. We can just grind them to the ground the dust slowly. Oh, good Christ. Almighty God. They have so many of them. All right. Plan B is that we fight them enough to the point where they are just willing to peace out for less. 52%. That's already better than what it was before. At this point, a lot of people would either, you know, reset or just give up. <sighs> but as miserable as this is, we have to keep going. Just keep fighting them again and again and again. If we are lucky, the Ottomans might even just declare war on them. Their troops are going this way, they're going to lock in. I think we go in for Narbel. I think we peace out. We only lose like 4 provinces and, uh, and since the Mamlukians will get this fort, they will also get more wars go back. Yeah, I think we just have to do that. No, no, I'm not taking the risk of them taking that fort. I'm peacing out. A few hundred, like 147 ducats, and there you go, we are, we are at peace. Honest, honestly, I think the best option we have right now is to fight Shun. They are in absolute disarray, they are weak, we have no rebels to deal with yet. Yeah, I think that's just the best thing we can do. Right, now, just annex them straight away. Raise them. Oh, this is what we needed, Horde Unity. And then, declare war on Shun. And we get a free siege from the rebels with the 49. Man, Shun is just collapsing. Allies in EU4 can abandon you just like that. Although I admit, real allies in multiplayer aren't that much, that much better. Just get every bit of war I can. That's 93%. Just peace out. Feels so good finally taking a lot, taking some land back. Oh, just look at this. This is gonna be good. And of course, we will, we will trade company everything here. An interesting trick you can actually do is, if you're no longer using cavalry in your armies, you can just downgrade them to the lowest level so that when rebels spawn, they have the lowest quality uh, cavalry possible. That's a neat trick. Jesus Christ, the sheer amount of troops the Ottomans have is just unfathomable. Unfathomable. I don't know how to really stop them, honestly. They're just too damn powerful. I think right now the best thing I can do is just go after Lithuania. Because I, I can't really fight the Ottomans until they get weakened in another war. Because they are too strong. Oh, thank Christ, just an event about the Ottomans doing, inventing cork barrel wine. I thought it was something like, oh, we're gonna declare war on you. Be prepared. Anyway, to war with... Like, here's the thing, even if the Ottomans declare war on me, there's not much I can do, honestly. My best chance is just expand, 
expanding and taking more land than I actively lose. There's not much else I can do to stop that. Yeah, difference in quality is really hurting us, but again, we can take a lot more punishment than they can. Alright, we can start getting some of their allies out of this war. Oh, Lithuania is also getting invaded by Yarmans, so that helps. Oh my god, and the Yarmans declare war on us. I cannot do anything. I literally cannot do anything. I, I cannot do anything against the Yarmans. I just cannot. I'm no position to do that. Alright, the Yarmans will accept this peace deal. It sucks, but look, there's not much I can do about it. Look at this. We have 1452 development. And after this peace deal, we lost just about 100. That's just goddamn wonderful, I swear. Oh, the... The Ottomans make me want to strangle myself. They're too pow- I cannot stop the Ottomans. They're too massive. The Ottomans are by far the strongest in the world. There's nothing I can do. They nearly have more than Spain and France combined. Jesus Christ. They want to take more. I cannot stop them. Hi there, so as you can see it's November 1699 and, our, and my truce with the Armands is soon going to run. I have 100,000 manpower and uh, troops and they have 250,000. I think this is where I have to call it. In terms of mistakes, I have made two main mistakes with a third one that ties to the first one. My first mistake was not killing the Ottomans at the start of the 15th century in the 1500s when I could have done that realistically and not killing them when I got Miltech 16 and I got really good can. Like I remember a specific moment when I could have realistically killed them, they only had around, around 100,000 troops and I could have killed the armor but I, I didn't and I can't really do anything to stop them because because they will just keep attacking me and taking even more land from me and getting even stronger like look at that, I've, they have two point. 2.5k development, they're just going to keep rolling me. My second mistake was that I caused Ming to collapse and didn't go in immediately on China. The moment I was done with the Yamans, I should have caused Ming to collapse by fighting them in a couple of bloody wars and then immediately taken all of China before they had the chance to unify. My, uh, my third mistake that, as I said, tied into the first one was that I originally had Delhi as an ally, so to prevent the Ottomans from attacking me. This is a bad move because you don't want to be dependent on your allies for survival. Because the second the Ottomans saw that Delhi would refuse to join in a war, they just went in to kill me. And so, unfortunately, I think this is where I will have to end this campaign. Maybe one day I will come back and try to redo this campaign with uh, the lessons I learned from this, but overall, this was a really fun game for as frustrating as it sometimes got with the rebels. Especially those Ming wars that I was not expecting to have to fight really put me on my edge. So, you know, I can at least say I, I had an exciting game. Don't forget to go and check the first part where I destroy Muscovy with the help of Novgorod. See you next time. Hey there, if you like this video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, I put quite a lot of work into these videos and I hope you enjoy them. See you!